Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and clean the throttle body from this Mazda 2. Also, what you can look for if you have a live data scan tool and how the values of the throttle body position sensor should react under some variables, like changing the rotation per minute. So in order to get access to the throttle body on this car, we got to remove this intake hose, use some sort of peak like this. So let's have a closer look and unplug the connector. Now we need to disconnect this L intake hose, the rubber one. So you've got two hose clamps with a 10 millimeter, remove it. Okay. Okay, so here it comes. Okay, so from this point, if you have a closer look on the throttle body plate, you can go ahead and reconnect the throttle body. And now when you turn the key in the second position in the ignition and you press on the acceleration pedal, you should see the throttle body move proportional with the acceleration pedal. So let's see if that happens. Okay, so as you could see, the throttle flap moves accordingly, which is great. Now let's go ahead and connect the scan tool. You've got here the OBD2 port. Turn the key in the second position again. Okay, so we've got on live data here, all the values about the throttle body and the acceleration pedal. Right now, we want to test what happens when the engine is not running. So we basically eliminate the factor of vibration and heat, potentially heat, and therefore we've got a starting point in this diagnose. So let's press on the acceleration pedal and see what happens. Okay, so I'm slowly pressing on it, and you can see all the values rising. Okay, I'm going to go all the way down, and here they are. You've got the commanded throttle actuator, which is the signal of the computer about how much it wants the throttle body to be on. And of course, these other values are not full be because the throttle position is built in such a way that you cannot twist it 100%, like you cannot twist it to 180 degrees, if you understand what I mean. Yes, they are basically topped up. Now let's see if it decreases slowly. It's also important that the decreasing and increasing is nice and steady and you don't see any sudden drop. And that is what we are going to do when the engine is running. We are looking for those drops when the engine is basically stalling and then coming back again. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the throttle body, clean it up and see if there is any change when the engine is running. And before you clean the throttle body, go ahead and check if you have this scan tool, go ahead and check the values before and after so you can compare them. You can actually record it like me and then you compare them side by side and you will see what's wrong or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean the throttle body. You're going to need a 10 millimeter and an extension. All right. As I said, if you have a look on the other side, you can see there is a lot more carbon build up compared to the front side. Okay. So I'm going to actually completely remove the throttle body from here, which means that we have to disconnect these coolant hoses from here. I've got here two lockable pliers, which are going to be helping me to obstruct the coolant hoses so they won't leak just like this okay now the coolant is hot so be prepared okay there's not much coolant coming out okay so now let's take this throttle body and clean it up very well i'm gonna use mass airflow sensor cleaner because i've got a lot of them and they will expire soon so you see the gap in between the flap and the throttle body. That is the gap that's very important to be clean and you should be able to see the light behind it. If not, you probably have too much carbon buildup and that can obstruct the airflow, especially at idle, because it's important to not let any carbon build around here because then a little bit of carbon, a little bit of a layer of carbon 
will lead to more carbon and the process will accelerate. Also, if you find oil inside your intake, you want to fix that issue as well. Check out the PCV hoses. This car is not turbocharged, so that's going to be the main source of oil. You can see that black liquid coming out. So you can see, you might think that there is no carbon buildup in here, but this carbon buildup is actually very subtle. The layer of it can be misunderstood. Even though it looks like nothing, it can still affect the engine, so give it a nice clean. Okay, so now let's install it back. And let's reconnect the hose. Now let's start the engine and check the values. I'm going to reconnect this scan tool. So basically the throttle body has two position sensors. It has a reference point so it can compare it to and let's see. Okay. So on the screen right now, I'm going to try to put the values side by side with the engine on and with the engine off. Obviously, the values has to be exactly the same because here is not about how much air goes in. It's about the throttle position. So it's something mechanically that should be correct 100%. So what you want to see with the throttle body. So what you want to see with the engine off. So let's say you've got on the engine off some values and you compare them while the engine is on. That's how you know if there is any problem, if some of those variables interact with the signal. When you rev it up, you want to see how fast it will stabilize the idling. It has to be within a matter of seconds, it should go back to normal. You can see there is a little bit of hesitation there. It's kind of insignificant, but that over time can progress and create more issues. But anyway, now I connected the voltmeter, so let's see what's going on. Okay, so this was one of the throttle position sensors. Those fluctuations were because this one was not connected properly here. And you can basically do the same on the second one. And as you can see, each signal wire has different signal which sends to the computer. The first sensor was sending an increase in voltage when the throttle body was open. And the second one was sending a decrease in voltage. These are the pins I connected. The bottom one and then the one on top of it. And for the first sensor was the bottom one and the top one. And of course, with the voltmeter, you are kind of limited. You cannot see full values of the throttle body. So the test with the voltmeter can be quite useful. Man, there is a mosquito here. And it can help you determine if there is at least some signal. Send it to the computer. However, the scan tool is a lot better because you do that immediately without even coming into the engine bay. You just connect the scan tool and see the values. Okay guys, thanks for watching and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you are new to this channel, subscribe. You're going to get free videos about how to repair and diagnose cars. So until next time, drive safe so I can see you in the next video.